I'm George Reister. He's Ralph Amsden. And this is Reister or Wrong. Uh, Will Smith did something that we have all wanted to do is slap the shit out of somebody. Um, we have all wanted to do that at some point in time. Um, the NCAA tournament. Uh, we ended up, after all of that chaos, after all of that talk, we ended up with Blue Bloods back in there again. And the college football back at four people. Yeah, they're like, see, look, told you. Listen, we don't want to hear that. We want the drama. Uh, the NBA MVP, we must talk about that because it is two weeks away. And also, Tom Brady unretires. And people are like, people like Peyton Manning are like, yo, I need my gifts back. Don't don't be coming over here acting like you're a retirement. And now people are going to be like, ah, let me give them a cooling off period now before I send out the retirement gifts and before we do the parade and all of that. You have to be sure. Now now you got to sign a waiver. Like you cannot come out of retirement. Otherwise, it's going to cost you $100,000 um, <laughs> in, in airtime and all of that. Well, so we will start, though, with the slap heard round the world. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. Keep the wife's name out your fucking mouth. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. Keep my wife's G. I. Jane name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I can, oh, okay. That was a greatest night in the history of television. Okay. Okay. So we are here to uh, give a documentary out, to give an Oscar. Okay, so if you notice the uh, foreign language in the back, <laughs> it was because that was the... Uh, that was the feed that allowed us to show it to you without it being bleeped out. So I guess we would, there's so many layers to this, right? So the first thing is some people's initial reaction was, listen, Will Smith has lost it. He's completely out of pocket. It was a joke. This is a comedian, all of, all of this. But then you saw people retract, be like, oh, God, I didn't know that Jada had talked about her alopecia and how this had been such a big deal for her. Her daughter cut her hair off in solidarity that she was trying to pretend for years and years. She's talked about it, cried about it. This is something that she's very sensitive about. And truthfully, women are as well. Like this is and granted, these things are not the same, but this is one of those things that women get sensitive about very similarly to like when you have to have a mastectomy. Like there are women that are attached to their hair on that same level or even close, like it's a reasonable co comparison, but not exactly the same. And Will Smith, after a year plus of the August Alcina jokes, the crying Will joke, I, I think that Chris Rock just ran up on a bad time, dude, because you saw Jada's face. She wasn't feeling it. And, and he was like, oh, 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 listen, listen. <laughs> and he had just played Richard Williams, too? Bro, he's still partially in character. That's why Chris The Rock got his ass slapped. I mean, in in re you can always assign a reason. He shouldn't have done it. Like, and this is, this is me speaking wait, wait, from. Wait, 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 who is, who is he? Well, there, there's culpability on multiple sides here, but Will Smith shouldn't have slapped Chris Rock in front of everybody. Um, that is not something that should have happened. And you know that that's the case because Will Smith's adrenaline was still pumping when he went back and sat down in that chair and. And, and and was getting animated and elevating his voice. I think every man knows the look on Will Smith's face and the tone of his voice after he went back and sat back down. That was testosterone overrun. Yeah. Like dude, the same I have, <laughs> Listen, bro, I have been there. I have been there, dude. I remember a few 
years ago, I um if a few years actually no, this isn't even a few years ago because my daughter is eleven. So this is like twelve years ago. I was playing in a flag football league after I finished playing. And then there was this dude who was, um, me and her mom were broken up at the time. And this dude, uh, and I was dating somebody else, whatever, right? So actually, no, 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 I wasn't even dating anybody else at the uh, time. Somebody else had just come to the game. And this dude who was trying to talk to her was going back and reporting everything to, to her, like, like super whack, right? And so she's asking me about all of this stuff. And we played in a game against each other. And no, 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 no. It was prior to the game. And we're on the sideline. I cussed this dude out so bad. I slapped him in the face. Slapped him in the face. I called him everything but a child of God. I was like, you're going to fight me right now. You're going to take this fade. Nope. Nope. Just back down. And then after, like, I felt bad. Like, I was, I was in the car. I was like. God, please forgive me. Like, I know I just acted an ass in front of a lot of people. But guess what? Won't nobody else try that, though. Won't nobody else try that. So <laughs> we're going to be all over the place on this one. And you just got to you, you gotta forgive us because I feel like this is everybody. Everybody's all over the place on this one. But I see a lot of two people saying two Americas, right? Uh, that there's people that were like, you can't. You can do something like this will smith will never recover uh um, what do you mean and then never a lot recover like all right hold on understand and, and then a lot of other people saying like it's good that chris rock finally learned his lesson first of all we don't know if chris rock learned anything the one thing i know for sure is will smith helped chris rock sell out his next three tours because i've been to a chris rock show they put your phone in a bag and everybody's going to be wanting to go see what chris rock has to say just like everybody went to go see what chris rock had to say about his divorce Right. Like yeah. the only way you're going to get to hear about his divorce is if you went to go see him live. The only way you're going to hear about his perspective on this slap is if you go see him live. So I guess Chris Rock probably owes Will Smith a thank you for paying for his grandkids, grandkids college. Um, but I think the <laughs> the thing the thing here is w there's definitely been some two America's reactions, but it's not just along racial lines. I feel like there's a big difference between people born in 1989 and 1990. <laughs> Like, I think that's the cutoff for people that haven't really ever faced this type of consequence for stuff that they've said. Because I can tell you personally, like, I've been the first one to throw a punch because of someone, something someone said five or six times, and I've eaten a punch <laughs> for stuff that I've said. And there are lessons you learn from that. Yeah. yeah. There are absolutely lessons okay. you learn from that. So there is definitely like a generational thing going on here of people who haven't had to face that type of consequence or people who haven't lived in an era in which you might have to pay uh, for, for what you said. And, and a lot of those people were like, that's assault that we just witnessed an assault. Like it's only an assault. If the person who got hit decides to press the issue and say it's an assault. And we talked about this on our show on Friday. We talked about this on our show <laughs> on Friday. If you go back to Friday's show, imitate we, life, life. Imitates yeah. We, art. We talked about Jorge Masdevall going to a restaurant and beating up Colby Covington because of something Colby Covington said about his kids. And you and I like agreed that like sometimes you got to cash that check. Like if you decide to go down that yes. road, now Colby Covington pressed charges. And we Lame. even said, we, we talked about the fact that sometimes there's an excuse for this type of violence. And one of the examples we used was Charlie Villanueva's alopecia. Yes. And we are and two days later. what happened. <laughs> two, yes, just a couple, just two days later. Bro, listen, I understand why Will Smith did it. Like, people will be like, you can't do that ever at the Oscars. Listen, bro, sometimes in that, in that moment, because if Will Smith had to do it all over again, I don't know if he just catches him at the, at the, at the after party, but Listen, Jada was sitting there. If you saw her face, how devastated that she was, Will Will was like, I got to take action right now because this is what Richard Williams would do right now. But when you heard his acceptance speech, that that's the other crazy part about it. Like, let's, let's go. Actually, first, let's go back to the actual punch. I'm sorry, the actual slap. He walked on stage. Chris Rock knew that he was mad when he walked on stage. 
right? He thought he probably thought, ah, he's going to say something. And Will Smith was like, hey, here's the slow-mo of it. He walked on stage, and it looked like he was saying, bitch, <laughs> when he slapped him, right? So then he slaps him. But here is the kicker. He turned around and w- walked off stage, fixed his belt, like, like, bro, I'll take my belt off. I'll give him a whooping next time. And didn't did, did you notice he did not look back? Like there was no fear of a retaliation. Because if that was me, this fool would have caught a, a damn a damn microphone to the back of the head. Wow. I mean, I would have said probably in, in the mic, hey, y'all might want to go to the commercial right now. And it would have been over. Like we they would have had to find, they would have had to have set design come up and and mop up some blood. Cause because and then he down there talking crazy to him too. Keep my name, my wife's name out your fucking mouth. Says it twice. And then what did Chris Rock say? He said I will. I could. Well, first he said, I could. And then he stopped himself because and I want to give some why? credit because, well, okay. because if he kept talking, Will was coming back up there. Maybe. No, because maybe. no, there I, wasn't no maybe it, it was he had drawn. He had already slapped him. So at the point in time, he said, if you keep keep my wife's name out your mouth, if you if he didn't at that point in time, what happens? Here's what I know. Who had the microphone? Chris Rock. Who had the moment? Will Smith. No, I mean, like, it It was, he had the microphone, the camera was on him, mm-hmm. right? Are you going to tell me, first of all, every comedian knows when they got in somebody's feelings, right? This one was extremely obvious because somebody actually got hit in the face. Do Chris Rock does hundred plus dates a year. Chris Rock came up in clubs where people said probably the worst shit imaginable to him. Chris Rock has probably had his physical well-being in danger before on multiple occasions. And Chris Rock is the clown. He's not the aggressor. He's not like the physical bully or anything like that. We know that the, the, the Smiths got their feelings hurt. We know that Chris Rock had the microphone, had the moment, and we know who Chris Rock is. That moment when he said I could and stopped himself, he he put the gun down before the kill shot. Oh God, bro. And I want to get no 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 no. I, oh I want oh. no 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 no. Okay, first of all, first of all, the person the people that were up in their feet, the people who had already lost, like literally the phrase losing it, the people who had already lost were were the Smiths. It was Will Smith. What did what Chris, did he lose? Chris his composure. He lost himself in that moment. He, he he spent the next hour crying on and off because his own adrenaline had him all over the place. He knows that he did something at least before this and after this moment that he's going to have certain regrets about. I'm telling you, I want to at the very least give Chris Rock a little bit of credit for making the smart decision when he had the weapon low. He is the weapon. No, he already not, managed you, to offend do you those understand, people. Ralph, Ralph, at that point in time, like like talking, and, and this may be a black community thing. Chris Rock went out like a bitch. Like, like there's no like there's Which was no the right honor. move. No, it's not, bro. If somebody comes So you're up saying there, so you so you're saying that what Chris Rock should have done, the right thing to do would be to finish his jokes about Jada no, in no, front of that whole room no, because no, he, no, 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 no. The right thing to do would be go fight Will Smith. You cannot, there is no, there is no honor in what, in what he did. There is no, Oh, I just sat up there and I just got slapped. No, every, do you understand that every woman that looks at you because he's not married anymore. Every woman that looks at you, you, the, uh, the, the, uh, time that you yell at her, Oh, you can yell at me though. Why you ain't do Will like that? 
bro, it's the, you. You have to. You cannot just sit up there and do that because because guess what? Everybody knows that you can slap the hell out of Chris Rock right right now, and this may be a community issue, but I'm telling you, he went out bad, bro. Like like like, and then when he said, "Keep her name out of your mouth," you was like, "I will." Bro, it, it, there's he's no nah, that I, wasn't I, that, I it, that wasn't that wasn't a I will that was like that 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 was like are are you are you kidding like you no, can't be no this way, dumb bro. so it look, wasn't he so, wasn't he wasn't sulking or sullen he was he was in shock yeah but, but like the, anybody but the would problem be is, got, but the problem is this is that okay so there's certain levels to this do you think Chris Rock knew that she had alopecia. I don't know. I just thought it was a bad joke. I thought, you, first of all, think that changes I didn't know how you, feel I didn't about know. It? No, I'm just saying, do you think that changes oh. how you feel about it? Oh, definitely. Definitely. If you have a woman in your life who is like struggled. So we have four kids. My wife lost her hair after every kid, which we didn't even know was a thing, but apparently it's just a thing that women don't talk about. When your hormones reset after having a baby, you have hair loss right? Yes. My best friend, my best friend in life was my aunt who served in the military, who helped raise me, who I lived with. She struggled with hair loss her entire life. And it was like a really big self-esteem issue. I'll never make a joke like that, but I'm going to tell you, I didn't know. Chris Rock probably should have known. He made a movie called Good Hair. Yeah, but there he, are he knows that it's a sensitive on, on issue for women. As well. There are writers on staff as well, because he could have, he, he, he could have taken jokes. Right. He could have taken somebody's line because it, it is a bunch of Hollywood comedians who get hired to write jokes for yes. the host. And I know one of them who is a writer on staff. He's a very close, close friend. So does he think that that was a Chris that that, that was a Chris Rock line taken um, a shot at them? Uh, he was working last last night on the show. So we we're supposed to talk today. I should have caught him early, early this morning, but he was probably still tipsy from <laughs> the uh <laughs> aftermath of the Oscars because it was largely successful. Yeah. Aside aside from that. I, I just want I do I'm not saying that Chris Rock deserves credit for anything. I'm saying you and I know who Chris Rock is. We know that we, he has spent his entire life bullying bullies. That's what a comedian does from the stage. You don't survive this long in the game unless you can not only handle a heckler but put them down. Like really put yeah, them but down. You can't and do I, that to Will Smith. And that that's the that's the first thing. And the apparently not. Is, yeah. And, and the second thing is, bro, like I understand where like, so, and I do want to give Chris Rock some credit, right? Because in terms of how he handled himself as a professional, because if you are the Oscars, you're like, oh shit, Chris, Chris Rock can host again because he can handle anything. <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? I mean, I mean I guess even, so. though, even though he wasn't the actual, you know, host that there was multiple. I feel I also feel like Chris Rock paid Ricky Gervais tax because for the longest time, these award mm. shows would hire Ricky Gervais to get up there and he would say some evil shit to their faces. And I don't like some people like that because they don't like celebrity. And there's an absurdity to the Oscars of like all the famous people in the world getting together to pat each other the back and then give speeches about how we're all living our lives wrong and we need to make changes <laughs> yeah. like nobody was nobody was trying to tune in to hear Joaquin Phoenix say that we shouldn't drink milk like no like that that and, and so the, the absurdity of the event there's an aggression towards celebrity culture anyway so there's a lot of people who just like that Ricky Gervais just gets up there and lights to everybody um Chris Rock is in that sort of like fearlessness bracket of where they would they they would go up there and they would say absolutely anything. So I think there's a lot of people that probably just enjoyed it for the fact of like they don't they don't like that that people can just go up there and be super mean. But there's also a lot of people who just probably like that the comedian is up there saying all of the the mean things that you think about celebrity uh, culture. It, I think the tone should probably change. Think, I don't think it's healthy to just go up there and like and talk about people's personal lives. The appearance thing is weird. I'm just saying, I didn't know. And also, I have a question for you, George. Would you watch G.I. Jane 2 starring Jada Pinkett Smith? Because I would. Yes, of course, bro. That'd be, it, it would if, if, this be movie, great... if this movie ends up being greenlit with Chris Rock as a producer, we'll know this whole thing was f <laughs> Like, if the <laughs> Smiths end up getting $20 million off G.I. Jane 2, yeah. 
Damn. I would like to see G.I. Jane too. <laughs> Bro. Okay, so now now the other aspect of this whole thing, because we because we are going deep in the woods on 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 this. So the other aspect of this is I mean, I guess like now what happens to Will Smith? Because there are people that say, oh, his career is over. I'm like, you can't and you can't end Will Smith's career the same way that you couldn't end Mel Gibson's career. And this is totally different. Like, if you couldn't end Mel Gibson's career for anti-Semitic remarks, right? You can't end Will Smith's career, number one, for slapping Chris Rock in the face after making a joke about his wife. Because there are people that are going to be, there are wives everywhere. We talked last night. There are wives everywhere. I talked to probably five wives last night. All of them are celebrating Chris Rock. First thing, I'm, so, I'm sorry, celebrating Will Smith. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, is that Will Smith is famous enough and has enough money. He's got his own production company. You don't want to hire Cool, no problem. I'll make it myself. Like, you can't cancel Will Smith. And over did this see, either? Yeah. Hell no. Did you, did you see who was comforting him in the aftermath? Yes, Denzel Washington. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the other guy. Oh, it was Denzel and... Um, Tyler Perry. So if yes, you think Ty- that Will Smith's not going to be able to be in any more movies and Tyler Perry's on his side, who Tyler has his own Perry studio owns, in Atlanta. He owns his yeah. own version of Universal Studios. In- yeah, no, there's about to be Medea presents Red Table Talk. Yes. <laughs> like, no, Bro. Will Smith's going to be... Will Smith's gonna be fine chris rock's gonna be fine it's definitely a before this after this moment i just think that there's a lot of people who have standards and believe in no aggression no altercation a lot of the same people who oh man i can't believe i'm going down this road. but a lot of the same people who bang the table for martin luther king nonviolence, you know like martin luther king said nonviolence, like they're using something to speak to their own thing of like hey nobody should be touching anything hands to yourself like control your own actions and there's a lot to be said for just having that perspective in life i i, I you know i believe that but at the same time uh, you and i both grew up in an era in which you, there has to be a knowledge that there could be consequences yeah. for what you say and that's how we keep things civil like civility comes out of knowing what happens when things are uncivil correct correct you so right I, I don't that. know, <laughs> but, but however, 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 I, I will say I have told my wife this, I, please don't honk at anybody in traffic. Please don't flip anybody off in traffic. If I'm in the passenger seat, I've had to tell her like, don't, don't like, don't get aggressive in traffic. If I'm in the passenger seat, because if you express your dissatisfaction with somebody and they decide to come back at you then I have to commit assault or murder. Like you leave me no choice. So I think a lot of people have the understanding that like, if she could have just taken that joke, if she didn't like roll her eyes or get upset, if she had laughed, Will Smith's not going up there. If she had just like laughed, right. If she had been over it, but he was left with no choice in that moment. And I think we all have that, in our relationship of like it, if you could roll with the punches, then I won't be forced into a situation where I have to defend you and our entire lives fall apart because of it. Like, I think, I think that exists. And I've, I I have had to tell my wife, like, look, you have to measure that if you honk at somebody in traffic and they honk back, I might have to fight them. So please, (laughs) if you don't want me to get in a fight, you might have to have thicker skin. I've had that conversation. Mm. So if, if that's my question to you, if Jada had thicker skin in that moment, not that she needed to, but if she had thicker skin in that moment, does Chris Rock get slapped? Why does she need to have thicker? Like, like, like now we're, now we're victim. I'm not saying she needs to. No, 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 no. I'm not victim blaming. Yes. Victim. This whole podcast is victim blaming. This whole podcast is saying that a man deserved to get hit. (laughs) <laughs> no dude you can't light if you can't she, light a fire you can't start a fire and then play the burn victim
you can't start a you can't in this metaphor you can't start a fire if the other person's not flammable. Why? Why should the other person have to be non non flammable? She shouldn't. Like, but I'm, what I'm asking you is, if she was not offended, does Will Smith hit Chris Rock? No, but then no, probably not. Probably yeah, probably probably not. But you know, he got his ass slapped. <laughs> That's all that mattered. All right, uh, now on to the next. Uh, the NCAA tournament has has gone yeah, on. It's just speaking of getting smacked. Oh my <laughs> god! Saint yeah, Peter's. speaking of Spader, <laughs> bro, St. Peter's went out bad on me, bro. St. Peter's went out bad. I bought the Kool Aid. And then as soon as they got some expectations, because I do think that that's what, what happened because they missed so many layups, bro. Like they missed shots that they would, that they had been making all tournament. And I think that that was because there were some actual expectations for them and they crumbled on un, uh, under them. Is it that, or does North Carolina smell blood and really want to end coach K's career? Like I just, Part of me, part of me is like, man, North Carolina is recognizing the opportunity to end Coach K's career on a loss to UNC. Yes, like oh, oh, it's in I, their sight, and they're hyper focused, and they know they can do it. Oh, I definitely think that that's one of the things. I definitely think that that is a reasonable, you know, what I mean, like a reasonable stance on this. Yeah. How do you how do you feel about about with all the nonsense with Miami and Miami played Kansas tough up till halftime? We're not going to talk about this right now. Um, but w- with all that, with uh, with Iowa State, with um, with Saint Peter's, and with, with all these high seeds making it this far into the tournament, that we ended up with probably four of the eight most recognizable names in college basketball: definite blue bloods, definite like big name brand schools all in the final four again. I love I like I I I don't have a problem with that. I know some some people do. They're like, "Oh my god, it's always the same people." And I'm like, "How is that? How is that?" Like I don't think that that's abnormal that we sat there and we got a good, you know, a great tournament. We got storylines. We got everything that we wanted. So why then would we be upset that we didn't get, you know, like, like it's never happened. A 15 seed has never been in a final four. I'm yeah. I'm the, well, they had never been in an elite eight prior to this, this, this team. So the idea that we were expecting something else, I just don't buy it. I'm like, why, why were you even expecting anything else? I mean, yeah. but 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 then that gives credence to the people that are like, ha ha, college football playoff. This is why you don't need to expand. You end up with the same thing anyway. It doesn't matter. Like, but the but the thing is, the road there is what matters. The road there, because guess who wasn't in there? Kentucky. Guess who wasn't in there? Um, you know, uh, who, Arizona. Who, yeah, Arizona. Uh, Gun- Gonzaga. Those were the teams that weren't in there. So yeah. I'm all in on it because it's the journey because there will be upsets. And yes, it will take a few years for the playing field to get a little more level the way you can have more uh, upsets, but they will happen. If you like, if you build it, they will come sort of thing. Not if the teams that finish in the top four every year, get to farm out the best player that's at St. Peter's, the best player that Iowa state, the best player that's, you know, yeah, but like, those like, teams won't be 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 in there. You know, like Oregon, Tennessee, Oklahoma. Well, actually, Oklahoma will be one of the halves soon. But you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I just am watching Kansas get led off the bench by Remy Martin, who they you know they got on the on on loan from Arizona State <laughs> for his fifth college year, and so it's one of those things where it's like, is it even possible for the middle class of college basketball? to rise up to compete for a championship. Can you get to the elite eight? Like, yeah, we've seen that we've seen, or, or didn't George, didn't George Mason hit the final four? Yes. Yep. 
Yep. And George, we've had no, no, we've no, 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 no. Wait, wait, no. Butler, I think George Mason. No, was George Mason in Final Four or the Elite Eight? Um, but that's but, been a minute. Yeah, yeah, and you've had VCU in. VCU, Butler. Yeah. Every once in a while you'll get and, – and, and all that's well and good, and I'm not saying that I need the t- – I think the cool thing about the, the, the tournament is you can have somebody be a Cinderella story, and it's okay if that Cinderella story ends and then we're, we're at, the, at the big kid's table at the end. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's going to stop anybody from watching college basketball. I just wonder, is, is it going to start to happen less frequently? Because if a team makes a deep run, then you have every major team in the country watching and salivating over getting some of those players on their team. And then you just kind of open it up for free agency at the end of every year. So you kind of you you they're sitting there like, ooh. Yes. Yes. Mm, yeah. They I get the bird, the bird man gif. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, can, I can use that. That's, all That's exactly right what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. Is you, you're you're out there showing out for whoever your next team is going to be. What's nice is it the that um I feel like uh, St. Peter's made it so deep into the tournament that they have uh, that Shaheen Holloway has no choice but to go back for another year. No way, bro. He bro, he's going to be the next coach at Seton Hall. And he would be the next coach at somewhere even bigger if they if there were um, if all the jobs hadn't been filled already. I'm excited for him. I'm very excited for him. He's what are you excited about? Getting paid. I just it, it's it's really cool to see all these like flashbacks of 20 years ago of him winning MVP of the McDonald's All America game. Those pictures with him and Kobe, like his basketball journey. I think that he is a name that people should know. Like, I'm excited for him to be in the in public. Eye. Same way I was excited for Shaka Smart when he when when he when he got to come up. Like, I think I think people who are really good at their jobs getting elevated because they were good at their jobs is the best thing for for the sport. Yeah, and that might that might sound like I'm being hypocritical because I just one of my worries is that like all these players. Are get plucked but playing basketball and coaching basketball are two different things coach basketball coaches have the ability to have effect on so many people right they have yeah. they're they're in charge of helping those other people come up and so i think anybody who um, anybody who is is a good coach deserves to be elevated so that they can have you know more of an effect on more people maximize more people's talents help more people get where they want to go and i think i think you know, based on listening to his interview with you, uh, his interview with part of my take, a bunch of other interviews that he's given over the last couple of weeks like this. He 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 knows exactly what he's doing. And I think he's going to be really good for college basketball. Oh, for sure. I totally agree. One one hundred percent. Who's your totally. So who's your who's your champion? These four teams left, knowing that Villanova obviously is yeah. at a deficit with their North star Carolina. player. Taren is the I think they're playing good, good basketball. Hubert uh, Hubert Davis got got up there and he cried his eyes out. There are people calling for his job in the middle of the year. <clears throat> well, I bet you ain't not calling for his job no more. It was his first season. Like chill, chill, folks. Like like they like they act like uh, Roy Williams or Dean Smith had you know the best seasons every single year. Nope, that's not what what happened. Um, Is it unfair to have a team have that much continuity? To go from Dean Smith to Roy Williams to now Hubert Davis in the Final Four, <laughs> I love it, dude. <clears throat> I love that that they were able to, to to do that because most times when teams, you know, when they go from when they try to you know hire a Michigan man, hire a guy like that, it don't it usually don't work out. They end up being like, oh wow, um, guess we need somebody who doesn't know the fight song already. But, or um, you just can't go in and do anything your way because that's not the way Roy did it. That's not the way Dean did it. Mm. Like, it's hard for you to go in and put your stamp on the program unless you go in and you win now. No, you are 100% right. All right. Um, <clears throat> la- oh, <laughs> the NBA MVP. Who you got right now, Ralph? Right now, Giannis. Really? 
Yeah, I think the NBA MVP award is as much about what you did. I so it's a regular season award, right? Yeah. Which which I don't like. I've never liked that. I don't I think the NBA's playoffs are like 38% of the regular season if they all played out to seven game series. The playoffs actually make up like a third of basketball. Which is crazy, right? Because in the yeah, NFL, it's yeah, one and yeah, done. In NCAA, it's one and done. Um, so the N- NBA playoffs are such a significant chunk of what an NBA season actually is that I think that having regular season awards is stupid. I've always thought that way. So what I do when I'm determining who I think the MVP is is I reach back into the previous year's playoffs. So if you reach back into the previous year's playoffs, but it shouldn't matter. It. It should, because it's kind of like if you set the tone and then you spend the next year proving it, then you, then you deserve it, right? Last year, you and I had this exact same conversation on this exact same show, and I said, it's going to be very tough for anybody to beat Nikola Jokic because we've never seen anybody this unathletic put up numbers quite like this. And he got the award. Yeah. This Giannis won a title. Giannis continued that dominance into this year. The wins aren't really reflecting it, but you can't use wins as a metric, especially with the point you're about to make or with anybody, because if you're going to talk about wins and you have to talk about the Phoenix Suns and nobody wants to talk about the Phoenix Suns. So therefore my MVP is Giannis. It's not Embiid, even though I'd have him in the, in the conversation and it's not Jokic because they haven't elevated from last year. And I would, I would, I, to me, they would need to, they would need to take a step forward um for him to you know continue to be in that con- but he he's going to be a top 3 guy. I think that anybody who says that Devin Booker doesn't belong in the conversation is making a mistake, especially now that he's on his revenge tour and he just you know tore up Embiid and Jokic on back-to-back nights. However, I I I think that with my theory of how you have to kind of reach back into the previous season, this is Devin Booker waking people up and he'll have the opportunity to win MVP next year. So for me, it's Giannis and that is why. Wow. Wow. I I couldn't, I couldn't disagree. Well, like I, 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 I like Giannis. I thought Giannis should have probably won it last year, but I think for this year that you're going to have to go more in depth, like in terms of like, I think that Jokic has a real shot to win again. It depends on where they finish because they are in the sixth seed right, right now. But I do think that you have to consider a guy like John ja, ja Morant or Jason Jason Tatum as well, who's been really, really good in late leading his team. But I don't like to dis I didn't like that Giannis got discounted last year because he had already won twice. I think you give the the award to the best best dude. So I think that it's either Jokic or um Jokic or Giannis. Like, but, but, but who, would you, who would you give it to, George? Who would you give it to? No, <laughs> of course, dude. Okay, so, and, and it's bad because, and I know that you shouldn't give makeup awards, but like, shouldn't he have won more MVPs than than he's actually won? You know what I mean? The standard for MVP seems to be the same almost every year. Are you putting up cartoonish numbers that people didn't expect you to put up? Or did you elevate your team 20 more wins than the previous year? Right? So, because one of the biggest points of contention between you and me is whether Steve Nash's was it second MVP oh God, should, yeah. should, should have gone to Kobe. Of course it um, should have. Everybody knows that, Ralph. Is that, but isn't that the year that, isn't that the year that Kobe quit in the playoffs? <laughs> anyway, um, so I think that, I think that the standard for MVP has never really been concrete. It's either, are you, did you surprise us? That's really what MVP almost always comes down to. But like most valuable, right? Like what could the team accomplish if you weren't there and i 
I can't, I can't even think about LeBron this year because even though he's statistically, and when you factor in his age, doing something that we've never even seen before, unless you cross sports and say, like we've never seen this before. It's incredible. I love it, but the team stinks. Yeah. The Lakers stink. Yes, dude. And that, and that's the inherent problem is that we're like, this team is so damn bad though. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. they're so damn bad. How do we justify anything else? Could you at least agree with me? Could you at least agree with me that at least this year, more than any other year, we the MVP should factor in at least the first two rounds of the playoffs? Because I what do- if the Lakers catch a heater? What if what if it becomes very, very evident that like Kevin Durant has really been holding all this together all this time? What if Devin Booker's hot streak continues? What if Jason Tatum, Jason, the tear that Jason Tatum's on for the last three weeks is unreal. What if that continues? Like, shouldn't we at least get a little more data? Can't we punt on the MVP, please? Because it's just going to be a bunch of teams that all won 51 games with stars that put up monster numbers. And then we're not even factoring in the team that's going to have 65, 66 wins at the end of the season because we don't know if Chris Paul or Devin Booker is the best player on the team. Because when Devin Booker missed time, the Suns kept winning. When Chris Paul missed time, the Suns kept winning. Cam Johnson hasn't played in a month. The Suns keep winning. Like, it's, they just win. They are just winning. So you can't give MVP because you can't even decide who's the MVP of that team. So then we have to boil it down to all these teams that are going to be within three games of each other. Why not just punt for a month? For one month and factor in the first two rounds of the playoffs. I can't. I can't. I can't That's the even, only thing that would give your boy LeBron a chance. I can't even hate on that, bro. I literally can't even hate on that because it's not unreasonable. It's literally we, not unreasonable. Can we talk about what we talked about on the phone last night? Could you, okay. Could you give Ja Morant most improved player one year after winning rookie of the year? Absolutely. He upped his scoring average like what, like ten points? Bruh, and they're and they're probably gonna get the two seed. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Both the Suns three years ago, both the Suns and Grizzlies lost sixty games. <sighs> and now they are one of the best teams in the league, which which makes me want to throw up because it may, may, makes my auntie so happy. Well, not because it makes her so so happy, but just because she's like, hmm, my 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 my, my Grizzlies, are you finally going to talk about my Grizzlies on your on your show? Oh, well, you, well, you should. Um, how how good do the Grizzlies have to get before you start claiming Memphis your place of birth like you've been doing it all along? What are you talking about? Like if the Grizzlies go seventy two and ten, are you gonna walk around telling people you're born in Memphis even more than you already do? <laughs> like at what point are you on the bandwagon? Be honest. I'm a I'm a Cali dude. So you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm Cali. <clears throat> so it's not that I have anything against them, but you know. What if they draft Bronny and LeBron finishes in Memphis? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will be cheering for me- Memphis at that point. You're going to be wearing a Bryant Reeves throwback? <laughs> no, no, I'll be no, I don't wear jerseys, but but if but if I did, I would wear Bronnie's cuz I cuz I fool with Bronnie. I I I like Bronnie cuz my cuz he's friend with my kids and so is uh, Bryce, so, you know. <clears throat> but yeah. All right, last thing up. Tom Brady unretires, bro. Tom Brady unretired and Peyton Manning was like, "I need my gifts back." I need my gifts back from you. I need the bottle of wine because whatever bottle of wine he sent him was probably hella expensive, hella expensive. So now if you're Tom Brady, are you, because you've unretired, are you obligated to send all of these dope ass gifts back? Or do you just keep them and be like, or do you send, send, send a thank you note and be like, listen, don't send anything for the real one. I think you keep them like Vladimir Putin kept Robert Kraft's Super Bowl ring. I, I think you test to see if anybody actually has the intestinal fortitude to ask for them back. Also, I think if you win, nobody gets to say anything. I just want to know how bad you have to feel inside right now if you live in Atlanta 
anywhere in Louisiana or anywhere in North and South Carolina, because the only reason I feel like that Tom Brady unretired, forget all these jokes about his family. Even though if there was a, if there was a job for me to go back to right now, my kids are driving, <laughs> my kids are driving me nuts. I do the same thing. Like, I don't, I, I think what it comes down to is Tom Brady looked at his division and was like, Oh my God, do I got to do this myself? Nobody did anything to get better. He has six guaranteed wins on the, on the schedule. Yeah. He's going into the season six and oh. This division is garbage. The Saints no, have, are wasting an all time defense right now. And the Panthers have done nothing to get better. They're going to fire their coach mid season. Watch. And, and I know that Mariota is your boy, but he's not going to be an impediment to what Tom Brady's trying to do. You better watch your mouth. You better watch your mouth. I mean, no, 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 no. But I mean, but, but that's real talk. He's not going to be a true impediment to, to what Tom, Tom Brady's doing, but bro, I just don't know how we end up in a situation to where, um, <clears throat> damn bro. Like what, like, what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to say to that? Like I, I said it already that Tom Brady knew that he was going to get a chance that he had a legit shot to win a championship or for sure be back in the playoffs provided that, that, that he stays healthy. So I think he's trying to hit free agency. Tom, that's my theory. My theory is that it's not one year left. It's two. My theory is that he feels like he's got two years left and he wants to sign a one year deal in the best possible situation for the 2023 season. That is my creeping suspicion. And that that somewhere might be in Northern California. No, no, because if Trey Lance plays th- th- this year, he plays, plays well, it's a burrito, bro. Th- there, it ain't, it ain't happening. So do you okay. think, do you think, do you think that next year it's going to be a whole thing again? Because he'll have his own rights. And his option won't just be like, do you want to go back to Tampa Bay? It will be like, do you want to go anywhere? Mm. Can you Listen, imagine Tom Brady in a means, cowboy? That means that that he'll end up in Indianapolis his last season. But can you, but can you <laughs> with the with the Colts revolving door of quarterbacks where yes. they get to? That's hilarious. Can you imagine Tom Brady? <laughs> oh, get ready to to process this one. Can you imagine? Dak goes down mid-season 2023 and Tom Brady has a star on his helmet. Oh God. That would be awesome. I cannot, I cannot lie. I can't deny. <laughs> I cannot deny that that would be freaking awesome. Um, but you guys, that is Reister wrong for today. I'm George Reister. <coughs> He's Ralph Amston. <coughs> Peace out. Catch you guys. <coughs>